Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Sam Dever Podcast, episode 58. In this episode, I speak with writer and actor Devin Camp. Devin is someone I met here in Los Angeles through different friend circles, and he's an amazing guy. Great conversationalist, awesome storyteller, and I thought he would be a great guest on the podcast, and he definitely was. Told some amazing stories tonight, hilarious stories, and I'm looking forward to you hearing them. The book of the episode is a book I'm currently reading called Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, the creator of Nike. It's about his story, about how he set out to create Nike, and I haven't been this excited to read a book in a long time. I actually saw this in the Barnes & Noble bookstore, and I haven't bought a book in the actual bookstore in a long time, but I saw this. I've heard nothing but great things, and so far it's proven that and more. If you want to follow us to listen to the podcast, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. If you want to watch us, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at the Sam Dever podcast. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Devin. Well, Devin Camp, welcome to the Sam Dever podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. It's good to see you. You too. I felt bad at the uh, brunch we were at. A month ago or whatever it was, a yes. few weeks where we were on opposite ends of the table. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, they moved us to, to a different table and then it all, it, it was from a round table to a big rectangle one and we just wound up on, on two different ends of it. Yeah, and it's cool to do that, but you realize like, oh yeah, if you're not strategically placed, there's just some people you're just mm-hmm. not going <laughs> to. Yeah, I was just talking with, um, oh no, I can't remember his name, what, whatever the guy's name was that I was across from mm-hmm. me. I just... That, that was who you were kind of stuck with for the brunch was who you're sitting directly across from. Yeah, so yeah. So I was talking with him. Your corner. And you know, I, I, we met uh, at several of these LA events and mm-hmm. always, I've always had good conversations yeah. with you. And I'm like, well, what, yeah, Devin would be awesome to have on the podcast. Well, I am, <laughs> I'm more than happy to be here. I've got a lot of stories to tell if you want to hear them. Oh, I, I, I want to <laughs> hear them all, uh, before, especially the laptop one, but I don't want to... Use all our juice right off the bat. The laptop. The one. interview. The laptop. Oh, the yes, 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 yes. The uh, the Zoom interview. Yeah, no problem. Oh, okay. Well, maybe just tell it then. Okay. All right. Well, so uh, I think it was October. It was a few months back. I was uh, looking for a new job, and I was applying for just a lot of different things. And then my wife is like, hey, um, she works at a studio. She's like, there's this kind of little satellite location that is hiring. Are you interested? I'm like, sure. So I send in my resume and I don't hear anything back from you know most of the places that I applied to. And so when you get one for an interview, it kind of pops up, you know? And so it's like, hey, you're invited to this interview for, uh, it was called Nova. And I was like, Sarah, like my wife, Sarah, I was like, do you, do you know what this is? Is this associated with the company that you work for? And she's like, oh yeah, I think that that's, um, the, the shorthand, like the abbreviation for our like North Valley office where like the, uh, the HR department is. So it all kind of made sense. I was like, Nova, okay, whatever. So it's a zoom interview and I get on there thinking it's going to be a one-on-one with an interviewer and it starts up and immediately it's a group zoom call with like four other people. I'm like, okay, all right, like whatever, totally fine. I'm going to do this anyways. And it was, it was on zoom and I have to preface this with just a little kind of like a side. I, um, I recently started playing D and D dungeons and dragons with some of my friends and uh, we used to use Zoom as we do it remotely, right? None of us were really in the same state except for a couple of us. So we would do it remotely and we would all get on Zoom. And you can set your nicknames on Zoom. So I I had my Zoom nickname set to my character's name <laughs> for Dungeons and Dragons. I forgot about that part. <laughs> and he's, he's, his name is Donnie, D A. D A H apostrophe N E E, and it's kind of a joke. He's he's a giant turtle, and I couldn't think of a better name than one of the uh, Ninja Turtles names. So I thought of Donatello. He became Donnie. 
my Zoom nickname became Donnie, like spelled weird with an apostrophe. <laughs> so I, I get in this Zoom call and I forget about that because we hadn't used it in a little while. We had switched <laughs> to something else. It's too go, late to switch. I don't <laughs> use Zoom. So I didn't notice that it was still that character's name. And so I pop up and they're like, they're like, hi, um, Donnie. And I'm like, excuse me. And I look down and there it is, D-A-H apostrophe. And I was like, oh no, sorry, uh, that's something else. And I'm like deleting it. And so I'm already off to a bad start. I already look like some weirdo or something that had like a weird nickname. And so I fucking delete it and change it to Devin. I'm like, hi, I'm Devin. Like, <laughs> never mind what you just saw. And so they're like, all right, um, we're going to go around the group and we're going to ask, uh, you know, why you decided to um, apply for this company, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember exactly what the wording was, but they just kind of wanted to hear. Honestly, they just kind of wanted to hear someone kiss their ass about like yeah. their company, you know, part of the job interview process. And so I'm like, I'm telling them and. I'm not sure if I can say the name of where my wife works. It's a it's a studio rental place. So I'm just I I kept using that studio's name when I was referring to the company that I would like to work for and how great it was and uh you know how it sounded like they had a good kind of relationship with their employees blah 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 and I kept using the the name of this company. <laughs> and this interviewer is just kind of like just just blank. She's just like, okay. Um, so anyways, no, moving on. And she moved on to these other people and they all kept saying Nova. And I was like, something's not right here. I don't think this is, I think this might be the name of the company. I don't think that this is, this is the company that I thought it was that I'm, <laughs> that I applied for. And so, and it gets down to close to the end of the interview. And I knew that it was, I, I already knew that it was wrong. I had a kind of an idea and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm not just going to close my camera or like back out of this ring. I'm just going to do this as a practice interview, I yeah. guess, basically. Yeah. Cause I know that I'm not getting hired now <laughs> after the last like five minutes of things that have just transpired. And yeah, it turns out it was some like mid-level marketing sort of thing and there was she was like all right so we are selling verizon wi-fi routers that's what they sold that was what they were having these people <laughs> sell on the phone was was verizon routers and so i had to make up some bullshit about how you know they asked me they asked why they why would verizon use them why would they trust them and so i just kind of pulled some stuff out of my ass about uh them being a good company with great whatever i just made up some shit and got out of that interview and i called my wife and i was like that was not the north that was not the the hr department the hr department for your company that was a totally different company and i kept saying the name of your company in the interview over and over and over again and she's like oh i'm sorry I'm so <laughs> i was funny when you told me the story uh the first time i heard it you said you just wanted to take the laptop and just <laughs> i did after and just fold it down so after <laughs> yeah after i um after i was like yeah so i want to work for mama you know the name of my wife's company and after I realized that that was not the name of the company, I just, yeah, I just wanted to close my laptop and just <laughs> forget about the whole thing, forget it ever happened, just move on. But I I just kind of sat there and just suffered through the next, like, 10 minutes of that, of that's that a, interview. That's an awkward thing to do just with a bunch of people there, too. Like, you know what I mean? If it was just me and the, like, interviewer, <sighs> that's one thing. But it was, like... It was like with an audience. I like, yeah. I fucked up an interview in front of an audience of people. Like, I, I don't know many people that have done that. Like, it's like blowing an audition or something. But like, the, everyone that is in the room also watching you blow the audition. Like, it was just, it was really weird. And the part when, of changing your name. From the oh, minute. the first goddamn thing. D Donnie? What? No. Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, no. Sorry. That's something else. It was spelled all weird. It was it? an apostrophe. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just like Donnie, D-O-N-Y, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, it was with an apostrophe. It looked bizarre. <laughs> and she even like posh, like, Donnie? <laughs> and it took me a second because I was expecting 
my own name, of course. And so I thought there was someone else in the interview named Donnie. And I think she said it two or three times. I think why I've laughed part of the reason why I think it's so funny is because like these jobs and stuff make it so serious. Like, with the, yeah. like you said, like the yeah. part, like, tell us why we should even let you breathe air. And yes. Of, it's yeah. like, come on, man. Like, so why did you job? decide to apply to our company? I need a I'm job. On Indeed. And I'm just fucking <laughs> applying to yeah. everything that is within my <laughs> parameters. I, I don't know. That's why I don't remember the name of your company. Cause I don't remember applying to it. <laughs> so, so you did, you did take a crack at telling them why the Verizon router was the best. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even remember what I made up. It was all just a kind of a blur after the first few minutes. But yeah, I remember, I remember them saying that after all of this stuff, after all, all of this, like super serious questions, like, okay, so we're like, peddling routers on the phone um so what what would you do to sell a router i was like what the hell is happening like so that i didn't feel so bad about blowing that after that point because i was like okay this was not gonna be a good job even if i did yeah. nail this interview after i yeah. after i figured out that it was just a it was just a mid-level marketing sales position that was one of those like um you know, it just, it was just totally determinant on your sales. Yeah, so it was like pure no commission. salary, exactly, yeah. pure commission. It was a pure commission job. So it was a shit job. But yeah, I just, I think about that sometimes. Just, <laughs> just all those, all that stuff happening in, in front of multiple people was just beyond. I, I don't even know how to describe how I felt after the first few minutes. I just kind of <laughs> shut down. Well, better to have practice swings and something like that that's yeah. something you really want to do what would have been funny too is if like the head head boss was like watching in yes and then at the end he's like hey that donny guy yeah <laughs> it's like yeah that's the guy we want he's interesting <laughs> yeah. he kept using that other company's name yeah power move <laughs> he's like reverse psychology yes yes <laughs> isn't that a studio rental company weird <laughs> yeah. hmm. totally throwing him off and then he's gonna slide right in and yeah. sell him the router Oh, no. Man. Yeah, that was I, and I that's probably I mean, that's the only interview that I can think of that I was just like, that was just blown. I've had auditions, of course, yeah. in, in acting that I've just been like, that was just going to just going to try to erase that from my memory. Yeah. But job interviews, I'm generally yeah. pretty good at. And that was just the biggest like belly flop yeah. that could ever have happened. And, and so. Maybe that's my one. I get. I got my my really really bad job interview out of the way. <laughs> my my one that I had was years ago. Uh, was probably looking pretty good, but uh, they go, you know, because I it was one of those like they looked at some of my background. It was like I was good for the job, but it mm. showed on my resume that maybe he would probably be more interested with something over here. And the, sure, and the guy sure, asked sure. me point like, yeah, you know, looks like you got your degree in this. Uh, so if a job came along over here for this and I go, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I'd probably take it. Sure enough, I didn't get called back. <laughs> They're like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing in job interviews you learn is just like you guys got to play the game. Yep. yep got to exactly. play the game. You know? Exactly. So, so before this epic <laughs> interview, I want to take it all the way back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> take me back to New Mexico. Yes, yeah, a that's little bit of your up. background, and how did you end up here in Los Angeles? Um, so yeah, I grew up in New Mexico, um, up in the Four Corners area specifically. It's just kind of the northwestern corner mm -hmm. of the state. Um, kind of a random fact about me that I usually tell people when they're like, "Tell us something fun about you." Is I grew up in a in an earth sheltered home, so it's mm -hmm. almost like a almost like a Hobbit home, but not built into a hillside if that makes sense okay so it it it's kind of built like this with dirt over the top with two open faces Whoa. on the side but there's dirt just kind of over the top of it so my my room was kind of in the corner over here so it was almost like a, a cellar almost <laughs> i had a i had a bedroom window and stuff and it was at ground level but it was the room was kind of down below ground level and so i used to sled off it in the in the winter because <laughs> it was just kind of a slope. It was just a just a dirt slope, basically, that covered our our house. And so in the winter, I would get a sled and I would sled off my house. Oh, what? So like, 
I, I'm trying to vision. So it's just it was. I know what you're talking. The ones built in. So this was like freestanding. This was. Uh, the, this was. They they bought the plot of land. They dug a hole out, and then the the foundation of stuff and the foundation of the home went into that hole and it's just kind of like this with just dirt over the center of it. And it's just kind of below ground level a little bit. And it just, it's, uh, it's energy efficient. So that was my next question is, so why do they do that? We only had a, we almost never used the air conditioner. Like we didn't even have like central air in there. We just had fans, ceiling fans in the bedrooms and stuff. Cause it usually, because of the dirt, it was insulated. It wouldn't get over about 82. If it was really hot, it would be in the 80s in the house. But that was with no air conditioning Wow, at all. That Did you have an air conditioner? Fan. No, I just had a fan. You I just had a ceiling fan. fan in my room. It would get oh. kind of hot sometimes, but not as hot as here in L.A. with an air conditioner, honestly. <laughs> yeah. um, and then in the winter, we had just a um, like a wood stove for heating just in the living room. And that was enough to heat the house. My room was the coldest though. It was the furthest away from the heat source. And I complained about it for my entire life. And my parents never, <laughs> never believed me that it was that cold back there in that bedroom. But it was. <laughs> Did your family still have that house? Yeah, they still live there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I also grew up an only child. So it was just me and them. <clears throat> and um, I lived there until I moved to LA. So at 18, I moved to LA. That was the first time I'd moved ever except for like my bedroom once <laughs> so you went from the earth home <laughs> yes right to smack dab <laughs> to uh it was sunset and la brea right in the heart I, of it I, I i <laughs> i was basically i my first apartment in hollywood was um sycamore and fountain which is basically just a block off of la brea yeah. Like two blocks south of Sunset. So that's the first neighborhood that I lived in in L.A. And it was interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it was very, <laughs> very interesting, to say the least. Um, what brought you out here? Like Acting. What were, so acting. Yep, okay. acting brought me out here. Um, and so I came out here. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts uh, from 2009 to 2011. Mm. And so that was when I first moved out here and then I moved back for like a summer. So like maybe three or four months came back and then I've been, Oh, excuse me. I've been out here permanently since then. Yeah. So yeah, I've been out here 14 years now. Whew. Yeah. Whew. So you've officially, <laughs> well, that's what's funny. is like when I, cause I've been out here over five now and I'm yeah. like, Oh, over five years, but in LA years, that's like 20. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Cuz like cause most people, yeah, long. they don't stick around. It's that type of town, but yeah. uh, cuz I remember I was at a uh uh at the acting school I went to, I was talking mm. to someone I'm like, "Yeah, you know, it was at the time I'm like, I'm going up, coming up the 3 year mark." The guy's like, "Huh." He's like, "Talk to me at 7." <laughs> 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 like that's when you really start to get yeah. you. So we heard <clears throat> oh man, I mean they told us at that school it was like five or ten or you know, there's no answer. Yeah. Some people are out here for a week and they get a part. Other people are out here for 25 years and they don't get anything. So you never know. Yeah. So there's no real like tell talk to me when you've been here this long. But yeah. Just in average, like a lot of people don't make it to 10 yeah. for sure. A lot of people yeah. don't make it to five years out yeah. here if they're coming out here for um entertainment biz and Things either don't work out or they kind of shift to somewhere else. I have a lot of friends that move to like Atlanta yeah, or uh, New Orleans, New York, back home, whatever. So that's just kind of the culture out here. Well, there's a lot actually in New Mexico because of Breaking Bad and all Better Call Saul. Like there's agencies out there, I think. I've yeah, heard. there's some big ones in Albuquerque. So um, so there's a film scene out there too? I mean, aside from like Breaking Bad and um, Better I mean, Call Saul. Lots of indie stuff kind of shoots out there. That Rust thing with, with Alec Baldwin. Oh, okay. Where he shot the, yeah. the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the DP. Uh -huh. uh, that, was, that was outside of Santa Fe. So there's a lot of kind of low budget westerns or action movies or just stuff there's a lot of stuff filming out there which is good because they need they need that money in new mexico for sure um but then i think that there's like a big um or at least there was talk of like a big netflix studio opening in albuquerque yeah i did hear too, so and much. i can't remember if that like actually ended up happening or not yeah 
but but yeah so um so that's that's what brought me out here was but, uh, acting yeah. originally yeah and uh i think i really i might like my you're not in kansas anymore kind of like moment yeah i mean like the first night a police helicopter shined a light through a window i remember that very specifically <laughs> and i remember that i woke up and my roommate slept through that shit um so that was like one of them but then the maybe one of the craziest things i've ever had happen to me in la we were in an apartment complex with a bunch of other people from our school so my roommates were also people from our school so we kind of started to get to know each other and it's like our first week it's maybe the week before we actually started school because i remember that it was a weekday and that we were up late for some reason so we weren't going to school the next day i don't know why but we decided at about 1.30 in the morning, 2 in the morning on a Wednesday, that we were going to go up to Hollywood Boulevard because we thought it was like the strip. Yeah. We thought there's going to be people with drinks walking down the sidewalks and there's going to be stuff happening. And, you know, like we just didn't know. And so we go up there at like 2 in the morning. And, of course, it's abandoned, right? <laughs> it's a fucking weekday. There's <laughs> nobody up there. There's just like like – homeless people and us that's that's like <laughs> it that was like everyone that was on hollywood boulevard so we're kind of walking along we're 18 every single one of us was 18 my roommate was 17 he wasn't even 18 yet he oh was living gosh. with us he was 17 and we're all up on hollywood boulevard and we're kind of walking down the street and we get over in front of like the kodak like right in front of the kodak theater where there's that that big staircase for the oscars right we're right in front of that and we go to walk past these two guys that are kind of hanging out in front of the theater. One guy standing, one guy in a wheelchair. And we walk past them, and the guy in the wheelchair is like, you got any money? Like, nah, man, sorry. And he's like, you don't give me some money, I'm going to chase you. We're like, there's like four of us, right? There's like, and we're 18. We think we're fun. We're like, bullshit. Like, <laughs> fuck you, old man. So we walk down the street a little bit further. And we hear something and we turn around and this guy is going like 30 miles per hour in his wheelchair <laughs> down shit. the sidewalk. He's like, like Olymp like Paralympics. Like he is like coming right at ass. You. And we're like, holy shit. So we just start <laughs> running. And so now there's like four teenagers just sprinting down Hollywood Boulevard at two in the morning with this guy in a wheelchair chasing us. And we're screaming and we get down almost to Madame Tussauds and it, it's kind of like, it's like if you've lived in Hollywood long enough, you know what I'm talking about. There's just a staircase on the side of Madame Tussauds for no reason. It's not an exit. It's not, it's just like, like an emergency exit or something, mm -hmm. but it's right there, like right onto the sidewalk on Hollywood Boulevard. And so we get down close to that and I hear my friend Kevin, he's like, quick, run up some stairs. He won't be able to chase us. Sounded like a good idea. So we just, we run up those stairs at Madame Tussauds. And we're standing there and we're half expecting for him to like pull up and like get out of his chair, right? But he pulls up and he's pissed at us for running up the stairs. He's fucking yelling at us. We're flipping him off and yelling at him because he can't get up there to oh us. Oh my God. <laughs> Eventually, after a couple of minutes of us taunting each other, he he rolls off and we're just like, we just want to go home. We just ran home. <laughs> I'm probably, never going down yeah, to Hollywood like, again. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> we didn't know. We just thought it. We thought it was like, Times Square or something. Yeah, right? it's like it's yeah. always go and there's always the city people there. Yeah, no, <laughs> wrong, wrong. Got any money? Like, the... got any money? Yeah, he warned us. I'm, you don't give me some money, I'm gonna chase you. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> he did. Was he there another us. guy with him? Or was yeah, he... that other guy. He stayed where he was at. He didn't chase us. Also, <laughs> I don't know. Like. I don't know if those guys did that all the time or what, but that other guy just stood there and the one guy chased us down and then he went back and it was like nothing ever happened. It was, it was just weird. Dude, it, it was, was so weird. I remember the first time uh, I was living in Vegas at the time we were coming to film some stuff out here. I'm like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to go down to Hollywood. And at, I'm thinking it like, it's like the Vegas strip. Yes. Like I thought, cause on TV, yes, it looks humongous. Right. We get down right. there. No disrespect to like the Chinese theater, but like yeah. it's like this like 
It's not the, big. Like the, it's, the, it's like a block. Yeah, the <laughs> it's area over. with the handprints and stuff is like the size of uh, like an apartment. Yeah, really, like it's it's very small in the movies. Yeah, it looks like it's. And I thought it just went on for stretches, wide. for yeah, stretches. Yeah, it's like a mile of just yeah, lights that's what I and thought all it was. sorts of stuff. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, they, so, they fooled us all. Yeah, so they it do a good job. Again, there, I say nice. that respectfully, but it's, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I didn't. Uh, and, I mean, even now, like going down there, it's like that's not. Oh, I, 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 I don't. I don't. It. I don't go over the hill that much. No, <laughs> no. I I uh, I think that I've driven actually down Hollywood Boulevard two or three times since I moved, like two or three years ago. There's just no reason, unless mm-hmm. you work over there. Right. There's no reason to go down Hollywood Boulevard that stretch, at least. You know, if you are somewhere away from that stretch of Hollywood Boulevard, but that that stretch there, it's like driving through Times Square. It's like yeah. no one's going to do that voluntarily unless they have to. Yeah. Because it's just such a mess over there. And it's... Parking like, get, and... Well, it's just, it's always the first place people want to see when they yeah. come and visit you. If they've never been to LA, they're like, yeah. let's go see Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. It's always just like... <laughs> Okay, all right. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's mostly tattoo shops and t-shirt stores. It's like t-shirt that's stores. that's almost you want a shitty plastic Oscar? Like we can grab that for you real easy. <laughs> You're not gonna see any stars there though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so cause yeah, you've been out here a while. Like, mm-hmm. how have you seen LA? Is it I mean, is it pretty much the same? Obviously the pandemic happened and all um, that, but like overall, like from when you came here to like now. Is there a lot of differences? Is it the same? You know, I would say that kind of the the biggest thing is there's definitely a lot more like of a, a homelessness issue mm. now. So it's way bigger than what it was. It was there was never that I can recall like the the really large like tent encampments along the streets. Like there were a couple of spots here and there, and then it just living in Hollywood, especially you just kind of saw it in real time getting worse and worse and worse. And just, there became more and more and more of them everywhere because rent just kept getting higher and Mm -hmm. people weren't making anymore. Mm -hmm. So people were going, you know, becoming homeless left and right and they couldn't go anywhere. So they were just setting up on the streets in Hollywood. So I would say that's probably the, the biggest thing that I've noticed over time Mm -hmm. is that, um, lots of, especially in Hollywood, when I moved out here, there weren't as many of those kind of like, I don't know if you watch South Park, but the best oh, way, yeah, I can, Soto Sopa, those kind of like cool, trendy apartment complexes that has like a Trader Joe's on the first floor and like, you know, like underground oh, yeah. park, those yeah. really kind of bougie apartment yeah. complexes. There weren't as many of those in Hollywood mm. when, when I first came out mm-hmm. here. There were a couple and they kind of stood out and then they started knocking down all the old housing mm-hmm. in Hollywood and started popping those up just everywhere. So that's, that's another thing that I've kind of noticed, but I mean, kind of the essence of LA, honestly, it hasn't really changed yeah. at all. It's still kind of, it's a wild place. I yeah. mean, it, it just sort of is. Like I, like my first week here, I got chased by a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah. I've seen just some of the craziest shit that people will ever see in their lives, and I was just <laughs> like, just going down the street or just you know walking to the grocery store, or yeah. just doing my job, whatever you know, like not not going out and doing something crazy at three a.m. Just normal everyday yeah. things in LA no, that correct. would just blow people's minds if they're from yeah somewhere else really yeah so so that really hasn't changed much that that whole kind of thing but um yeah I mean god I've been yeah. here a long time now it's crazy to think yeah about. I, I don't know if I've told this story in the podcast uh Laura and I were driving this was this wasn't even this was like in uh was it chatsworth maybe i can't okay. remember but we're driving and there's just a guy st- <laughs> leaning against the 7-eleven just with his pants to his ankles <laughs> just just standing there and like what's cr- the craziest part wasn't even it's my reaction to yeah. it yeah i just kind of huh and then just kind of went back to, 
it's like you don't even register no, some of this no. stuff. You're so like immune to it. Whereas in other parts like of the country, you'd be like, "Oh my god, yeah, what's a guy hell? naked against a Seven Eleven?" But it's like out here, it's like, "Oh man, I, I, I wonder if the cops are going to come check yeah, on." Yeah, him. <laughs> well, someone will be uh, here in a few minutes. Yeah, probably, yeah, well, he'll probably be gone by the time the cops show up. He's just going to put on his pants, jump yeah, in his car, and drive off. Yeah, probably back to what I was yeah. doing. You know, <laughs> none of my business. I'm going to keep driving. So. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I have, like, a naked guy story also. Please tell it. Oh. Um, so I, I worked for a, a weed delivery company uh -huh. a few years ago um, for a couple of years. I worked through the pandemic, but this was probably 2018, mm -hmm. um, and we would deliver into Hollywood. And so uh, I'm doing this delivery in Hollywood, and it is, like, the hottest day of the year. It was, like, 110. It was... It was ridiculously hot and I'm having to fucking get out of my car and do deliveries. And it's just a miserable day for everyone in the city. And I, I pull onto this little side street in Hollywood. I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, it was kind of like, um, it was kind of like over in the area. It was like Franklin village almost. It was kind of like the area that like that I lived in. Um, and I, I pull onto this little side street and I look up ahead of me and up the street, maybe a hundred feet, there is, he's huge. He's probably like, this guy was probably like six foot four, 190 pounds, long black hair bound past his shoulders, not a stitch of clothing on. <laughs> <laughs> not even just like he took his pants off or he's took like it, just buck naked like, like he took off his socks his shoes his uh, everything and he was walking down the street and i know that he was <laughs> he was just he was walking down the street the middle of it not the sidewalk he was walking down the middle of the street and so i'm I'm maybe three or four cars back from this guy yeah. and people are starting to just make U-turns. <laughs> They're making like five point turns just to not deal with this guy. They're like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. And they yeah. just started turning and there's this guy in a Beamer that's maybe two car lengths ahead of me. And he's just like, no, I, I, he challenged He's going to challenge the naked giant. Right. And so he pulls up to this guy and this guy is just walking down the middle of the street and this guy in this beamer pulls up to him and honks at him and he just kind of looks down at this beamer and i swear to god like the hulk he's just like bang and he slams his hands down on the hood of this beamer and this beamer all of a sudden puts it in reverse and like starts doing like a six point turn to get away from the naked guy I had already started turning around by that point. I was like, I'm not uh, dealing with this psycho, like whatever. And it was a hundred and he must've been burning the shit out of his feet because he didn't have socks or shoes on. And it was probably like 180 degrees on this, on the, on the, the road. It was crazy. He was probably on a lot of stuff. <laughs> he was on everything. <laughs> that man was, was just sailing. So he didn't say, he just, he just, <laughs> he went <laughs> bang he didn't just go like fuck you fuck you you know like it wasn't just abrupt it was like a it was like hulk smash he just went like <laughs> bang and he slammed both of his fists down on the hood of this guy's beamer and the, the i was like i'm gonna watch this dude in the beamer get out and try and beat the shit out of this guy but he just that was it he decided nope this man is insane <laughs> and started there's something very beautiful about that moment you described right there because it's like you have the you have two dichotomies right like two <laughs> visions of la you have the extreme homelessness mm -hmm. craziness but then you have the super tenacious yeah not saying all people who drive being not saying no, that this individual was but just like drives in the fancy acting, car kind of it's get like that sense. it's like you can't mess with nature man no like, you don't you're not gonna win this one. No, like, they, that, gonna... in in that moment, that guy encountered it like he was an humbled. unstoppable object. He was he was coming down the street. Not a goddamn thing was gonna stop him. Not Beamer, not anybody else. And so I I <laughs> did the the same like ten point turn that everyone else did, and he never really got very close to me. He never got within maybe a hundred feet of me. And I pull around, and I decide that I was gonna park down the street somewhere else. <laughs> and like wait for this guy to keep walking by and i call the girl that i'm supposed to be delivering to <laughs> she's like oh hi i was like yeah hi this is you know so and so with um 
whatever delivery company. She's like, oh, are you outside? I'm like, um, <laughs> okay, so this is going to sound <laughs> kind of weird, but I, I'm down the street. There, don't come outside. There's like a, like a seven foot tall naked man outside of your apartment. And there's a pause. And she's just like, yeah, well, welcome to my neighborhood. <laughs> just the... <laughs> She just believed me. She didn't go like, what are you talking about? What? Let me see. No, she just went, she, 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 thanks she, for the warning. I'll, I'll wait a minute, basically. Pure empathy. Yeah. She, yeah. Welcome my neighborhood. I was like, holy shit, lady. So, oh, that is, dude, you have stories for days. <laughs> I mean, just the, the weed delivery stuff. Because Tell I me was, more about that, the weed delivery. So I worked for, um, I'll just say the name of it. It was Ease. It was called okay. Ease Delivery. Um, and so we would, um, we would just drive all over the place. And so I would, um, I would sometimes drive. after a point we'd only did Inland Empire. And when we only did in the, oh, in really the you Empire, drive all the way out, I would, yeah, I would drive to downtown. They would give me all my stuff and then I would go, um, to the Inland Empire. So like Upland, Rancho Cucamonga. All the way down to Corona. And Ontario. Yeah. All that area. Yeah. And then as far over as Beaumont, Beaumont. some nights. Wow. That was almost to, not almost to Palm Springs, but. So San Bernardino. Well like, yeah. San wow. Bernardino. Okay, yeah. uh, Redlands. Um, Yucaipa. Just all Rialto, over the place. Yep. Yep. Fontana. All those. Exactly. Yep. So that was, that. I, I was out there a lot. A lot. Um. And yeah, but you know, I, the amount of Inland Empire was crazy, but it wasn't like somehow it wasn't as crazy as just like 20 miles West in like actual LA. Yeah. It seemed like the craziest shit that I actually like saw always happened in LA. And then the stuff from the Inland Empire was just kind of like, mm, that's odd. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like there was one time I was driving and I was in Diamond Bar and I'm sitting at a light and it's maybe 9 30 or 10 it's kind of late and it's like a weekday so there's just no one out there because it's like quiet in in diamond bar after like 8 p.m mm -hmm. and i'm sitting there and i'm at this light kind of in the middle of nowhere and i look over and there's these donkeys sitting at the at the crosswalk just like a family of donkeys sitting there waiting for the light to turn <laughs> and then the the light turned i swear to god the 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 walk sign came on and they all walked across the street and they just went into this other like field across the street. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? And I just kind of went, huh. I just, just kept going. Wait, I'm, I was I was working, so I had to go. I so I just kept going. And so that was a weird one. Um, and then one time, uh God, it was like it was almost like Harold and Kumar or something Great like movie, that. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I had like that this weird instance where I was over by LAX I was in Hawthorne and it was dead and so I the the thing was if it wasn't busy you were just kind of sitting around but you're still getting paid for it so I was just kind of sitting near this gas station in Hawthorne and it gets to be my lunch time you know at night and so I'm like I'm just gonna go like I don't know why but I was like I'm just gonna grab a shitty sandwich from this this 7-eleven or whatever it was and so I go in there and it's just me and the clerk. And then these like three or four teenagers come in, kind of pile in behind me. And we're all kind of grabbing stuff. And I remember just like listening to them and they were just, they just kind of sounded like big dorks. Like I can't remember what exactly they were talking about. They were talking about cartoons or something. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of clocked them and I go up to the counter and there's like a guy in front of me. No, the teenagers get in front of me. And then there's a couple of teenagers behind me. And they asked the clerk, they're like, hey, do you have any sandwiches? And he's like, oh, yeah, there's just like this pile of like shitty $1 like gas yeah. station sandwiches. <laughs> and so this kid's like, thanks, and grabs one and runs out the door. And automatically, I see the clerk's hands go down under the counter. And we, the, the kids in front of me are like, oh, shit. And he pulls out an aluminum baseball bat. He's like, you'll get back here, you little bastard. And he runs out the front door. Oh, and we're like looking. And, you know, it's a gas station. So there's all that shit all over the windows yeah, for like, yeah. uh, you know, the mega millions and Ads all this stuff. And and, yeah, so yeah. we're like trying to look out the window. We can see him out there. And the clerk has the bat, right? And the kid has the sandwich. <laughs> and he's yelling at the kid. And... It was like, it was really funny because the kid could have ran off, 
but he, for some reason, kind of stuck around. I, and the guy with the bat really wasn't trying very hard to hit him. He was mostly just kind of threatening him and just yeah. kind of swinging yeah. around yeah. and calling him a little bastard and stuff. <laughs> and so the other kids behind me, they just they just take off, too. And he gets separated from his friends. They all book it down one side of the street. That's the way that he's being blocked by the store clerk by. So he's like screaming at his friends because they just took off without him. And eventually he he takes off and the clerk comes back in. I still want a sandwich. I'm yeah, still standing yeah. there. I could have stolen a bunch of shit and ran out if I was really bad. But I just stood there with a sandwich waiting for this guy to come back in. And he comes back in. And he's, you know, he's, we're talking about those kids or whatever. And all of a sudden this other older rounder guy comes in. He's like, where the fuck were you? And he's like, what, what happened? He's like, some kids, some kids came in here and they stole a sandwich and they fucking ran off. Where the fuck were you? He's like, I was, I was taking a shit. Like, what do you want me to do? And it was like, so now these two are arguing. <laughs> you just want a sandwich. I just wanted my sandwich. And so I eventually got it and I left. But I think like, it was like a minute of stuff maybe like in total, but it was just so bizarre. Like the yeah. whole thing. And I was like, it's a $1 sandwich. He's chasing this kid with a bat for like, <laughs> a, of like a, like maybe $2, like, yeah, it's like really I bad <laughs> gas station sandwich. <laughs> Is weed delivery? I mean, is that still a big thing now? I mean, it's probably it a bigger even thing, bigger now. than ever. Yeah, because I think it's now it's every ma and pa shop has like a driver or two mm. now. It seems like almost everywhere delivers. So um, there's still a few of those like big um, like just delivery companies that are not like a dispensary and a delivery service. The ones that just do delivery like like Ease does. There's a few of those left. I work for one right now that's kind of partnered with a other marijuana company. So we deliver their stuff and vice versa. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's exploded the last few years for sure. Um, Cause I mean, I've been in that industry since God, 2017. How did, how did you get into it? Like, was that something accidental? Just accidental? Accidental. I was working as a Lyft driver and I fucking hated it. And I hated everything about it. And I was going to acting classes. And one of my friends in that acting class um, was telling me about his job. And he's like, oh, you only work this amount and blah, blah, blah. And it was weed delivery. And it was for ease. And so I was like, that sounds great. Like, if they need people, like, let me know. I'd love to do that instead of working for Lyft. So he gets a hold of me one day and he's like, hey, like, come on in on Thursday. I was like, for like, for an interview? And he's like, no, for orientation. Like, they just like, <laughs> they just need people. Like, just show up and like, you, you're going to get hired. Not like your uh, Zoom interview. <laughs> no, no, I just showed up and they were like, welcome to the team. You're going to be like, just driving weed around now. And that was basically how it started. I basically started like that day. <laughs> Sure. So, so Lyft. So, you, what, tell me about Lyft. What, what was Lyft was? <laughs> the, I'm sure you have some stories. I've got that. I've got a couple of funny ones. I I really I don't have as many stories from my Lyft days. Sarah would be the one you would like to talk to about Lyft stories. The one that really comes to mind because I never worked like I didn't do like until two in the morning or because right. I everyone that did that had someone throw up in their car. <laughs> At least once or multiple times. And I was not going to put up with that shit. So I would stop early. So I didn't really have any of those really crazy, like, 2 a.m., like, bars getting out kind of stories, at least from mm -hmm. Lyft. But there was one that there was one that I remember from uh, it was Hollywood. And so I would always start over my my place in Franklin Village and I would just sit in my car, you know, set my thing to active and just wait for a request to come in basically and i get this one that's a little ways away and it's on the other side i think it was wilton maybe it was wilton i can't remember um vine mm, no what street was that it's gonna drive me crazy i might have to look it up because it was it was such a specific little thing that this guy had me do oh it was bizarre um let me just look up the name of the street it'll take me two seconds yeah no problem it was Gower. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's that big church on Gower right by the freeway. 
Like if you just get off on Gower, it's like you basically are looking right at this church. So I get a request over there. And so I pull over there and immediately I pull up to these guys and they're polishing off Ducati's at like 8.30 in the morning. And in they're the like, mor- <laughs> yeah, in the morning, like 8.30 in the morning, like on a Wednesday. And they're like polishing off their cans. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> and so these guys pile into my car and they're just like, hey man, this is going to sound kind of weird, but we just need you to drive to the other side of Gower. I was like, what? It was like 200 yards. I, I could see like uh, like down down whatever street that was that I turned off on across Gower to where they wanted me to drive. They just were so drunk that they were like, they're like, bro, like we cannot risk walking across Gower. We're going to die. Let's call a lift. So they called me and they're polishing off their beers as I, as I pull up. And they're just like, yeah, like it's just across the street over there. We just need you to drive us across the street. <laughs> I was like, Okay, (laughs) so I pull across Gower, maybe go like another hundred feet down this little side street and I let them out. They're just like, thanks. They tip me and they (laughs) took off. So they had obviously been drinking all night. They'd been drinking all night and something about ordering a lift to have them driven across the street made more sense to them than just trying to walk across. You know what? I don't think maybe, they were going to make it. Honestly, maybe I don't they think made they, the right decision. I, no, I think that, yeah, they were either going to wind up on the sidewalk before they even got to Gower. Public intoxication. Yeah, yeah. So they were just like, let's get a lift. And so I just drove them like 250 yards, <laughs> maybe. Like, it wasn't even a quarter of a mile. It was just down the little street, turn right on Gower, turn left on the very next street, go like 100 feet past the church. All right, man, that's that's good. You can let us out here. Okay. So I did. So I, I'm thinking because you've been you were out here. I mean, shoot, because I, I was in uh, right after college, moved to Vegas relatively shortly, and I mean, for me, the Las Vegas Strip was like my grad mm. school. So ah. I, I have always thought. So when I came out here, I had a, all that's out of my system. Yeah, of, because people were like when we first got here. I when I you know my brother and I first moved here, it was like, oh, we're we're going out tonight. We're yeah. going down to club. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I'm, like, ah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Like I, I just been there, done that. So like, did you have any of those phases like of going out? In the yeah. Scene? So when I first got out there, um, yeah, like the first couple of years and it wasn't cause I wasn't like, I was scared to get like a fake ID. Mm-hmm. So I was never like going to get a fake ID and try to get into a club. So we would always just find out about these apartment parties that were happening nearby and we would just crash them <laughs> and we would just drink free booze and get drunk and, and leave generally and go back to our apartment. So there was a lot of that. I remember that happening quite a few you, you times. You just showed up to parties? I, we would. Sh- it was always friends' parties, so it wasn't yeah. like strangers. But yeah, yeah we would just kind of not show like super up. bad or no, not of- like super bad. I think that uh, no, even like the super bad kind of like party that I went to one time in school was still an ada uh, um, student that yeah. uh, everyone knew. It was just a huge party at their house. But the ones that were nearby us, they were like in the same building as us because we were. Most of us were living in these two buildings on Sycamore, kind of like across mm-hmm. the street from each other or one nearby. And so we would just find out about apartments and other people, you know, parties in other people's apartments. And we would just go crash them. And then generally we would drink until we got drunk and they would go back down to usually my apartment because I was the only one with an Xbox 360. <laughs> and then we would just play video games until we all passed out. <laughs> and that cycle continued for a while. Um I was never really like, like the club, like the club thing was never really yeah. me. I never really did that whole thing out here. Um, ironically enough, the last few years I've been doing that probably more than I ever did, like in my twenties, mm-hmm. really. Um, so I never really had that, but yeah, we definitely had just kind of the, and I mean, we went to some kind of cool like LA house parties. There was a there was a kind of a big yearly Halloween party that would take place um, kind of in Burbank, kind of like um, kind of like Atwater village Mm. area sort of. And it was a, it was an Atta guy that they're renting a house 
they were like the only fucking people that we knew that had a house in yeah. Los Angeles. The rest of us were all crammed into apartments yeah. and stuff. And so we, we, the first year that I was in school, I was 18 and we went, all of us, everyone at the whole damn school went to this house party at this guy's house. And there was probably 300 people at this house, just this little Burbank, like one story house. And there was just, all of these students, how many people? Like three hundred, probably, maybe even more. Um, <laughs> and so we get there, and my buddy's girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> we get inside. And she just disappears. We're like, where? Where'd she go? Like <laughs> twenty minutes later, she comes back, and she's drunk already. <laughs> she just like disappeared, drank all of the alcohol, and then just reappeared. And she comes back and she's just stumbling drunk. And we're like, great. You know, like you get to deal with her. You're, she's your girlfriend. We're yeah. going to go enjoy the party. Yeah. And so we're enjoying the party for the next couple of hours. And it's, it's loud. You know, it's, it's so many students there and we're all just drinking. And then the cops show up oh. and we're like, fuck. And, you know, I lived kind of not really a sheltered life, but I didn't really drink or anything until I moved out here. Oh my God. So the cops show up. We're getting kind of nervous that they're going to come into the party, right? We're like, oh, fuck. Like, I don't want to get in trouble, blah, blah, blah. The cops, they're basically like, if you guys will all just shut up for five minutes, we will drive away and you guys can continue the party. We just have to say that you guys quieted wow. down and then we will leave. And they couldn't get all of us to do it. There was like 300 of us. You can't get everyone to shut up. So they, the next idea was, okay, we're just going to have everybody that is here outside jam themselves into the house so it's not as loud and then the cops will leave we'll all go back outside but they never took off they just kept sitting outside the, the house well there's while it's like the temperature is going up and up and up because there's like 300 people in this little like yeah. two bedroom house in burbank <laughs> and so it's getting hot as fuck and my buddy's girlfriend starts throwing up <laughs> and we're like we're like let's just leave like, they're, what are they going to do? Like, let's just leave. And so my buddy, um, my buddy John, he's he's kind of a big guy. And so he just picks up my buddy's girlfriend. It wasn't his girlfriend. It was my other yeah. friend's girlfriend. He just picks her up. And he's like, let's go. And we just <laughs> walked out the front door. And she's unconscious. <laughs> and there's, like, three guys with this unconscious girl. And we're just like, we're going to get, like, asked questions for sure. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Nope. We just walked right past the cops, <laughs> put put her in a car. Fuck it. We all piled in. We just drove off. We're like, wow. Like, why did they, they, they might have wanted to stop and ask some questions. Oh, that looked gosh. really bad in retrospect. We just went, <laughs> fuck it. Like, let's just leave. <laughs> And we just decided to leave because no one else was leaving. No one had that idea yet. It seems like. Was it just like, like two cops outside? It was, it was just, like, it was one squad car with two guys. So it was like super bad in a way. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. They did not want to be there. They had other shit to deal with. And they pretty much made that clear yeah. when they asked us. They were like, just shut up for like 10 minutes and we'll go. And then if you, we have to come back later. That's a different story, but yeah. like we'll we'll they take gave off. you the warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gave us a warning, and it just didn't work, and we all wound up in the house, and it was probably ended better. Up leaving. You, it was probably better you left. <laughs> yeah, I think that I remember hearing that. I think it got shut down after that, but it wasn't like anyone got in trouble or anything. Yeah. It was just like party's over, you know, get the hell out of here, and everyone went home. And so that was kind of the one kind of really, really, really big kind of crazy like kind of movie house party that i got to go to that was pretty fun yeah that's a lot of what my college experience was in a small town mm -hmm. uh when the cops showed up it's like you know your heart especially if yeah. you were the uh uh head of the house yes <laughs> or what one of them crap. and uh one of them uh we came back from the bars one night and uh, my, I, I remember like, okay, we just got to be reasonable, keep it down. And next thing you hear, do you remember that song? I'm on a boat. Yes. Yeah. Lonely Island. My roommate, yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> blasting out the, I'm on a boat <laughs> within like five, 10 minutes. <laughs> but the cops were, they, they were like, same thing. Like, yeah. 
just just yeah turn it down you know especially like in i don't know like they see like you're not trying you're not trying to cause any like real trouble no yeah it's like look guys we have to be here we don't want to give anyone some citations or take like so just work with us (laughs) there was one that i remember um it wasn't particularly memorable party but it was it was in one of the buildings nearby and we were there and it was a one bedroom apartment. There was a whole bunch of us crammed in there and we were being fucking loud. Right. And so all the neighbors were complaining. Cops show up. Bang, 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 bang. Someone opens the door and I swear to God, it was the tallest cop you'll ever see in your life. He had to duck down to look through the door. <laughs> he had to duck down to look at us in the apartment. It was like a movie. All of us were just silent. Like we just stopped. We were just staring at this cop that was like six foot eight that had to had to peek down into the door to talk to us. And he's looking, and we're all just fucking just dead quiet, like watching him. And all of a sudden, I hear my buddy Miles, and he's like, he's like, if you don't move, they can't see you, <laughs> like like a fucking T Rex in, yeah. in, in Jurassic Park. Park. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was another kind of weird one that I remember the cops showing up at. It was just memorable because that cop was just huge. He just filled up that door. We're like, holy <laughs> shit. Did you see this fucking monster cop that just showed up? He's like, you guys have to keep it down. Like, okay. I, just, I think I left again. I was just like, this isn't my apartment. I'm leaving. <laughs> I just left. Well, and as you're telling these stories, like, what's interesting is like, because we all have these fit this phase, a lot of us, I got to do this Vegas eventually, but before Vegas, it was smaller town environment. Yeah, you did that phase from beginning to now out here in Los Angeles. Yeah, I went through that phase you know out here. I, mean? I which is crazy. I didn't do. Yeah, I, I I didn't kind of party or anything out in New Mexico. It wasn't really my thing. Didn't it wasn't really a thing out there. Anyways, their version of partying out there was like bonfire beers. Yeah. Probably something stupid with a car, and yeah. then you know, like that was that was it. So it wasn't yeah. really a party. So I just never really got into that out there. It wasn't really my kind of like friends that that I was friends with or anything that kind of thing. So that kind of yeah, that sort of materialized in Los Angeles, really, <laughs> yeah. like pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, when just thinking, like I mean. We use, and this is even the pre-party days, like back where I'm from, like we used to do uh, uh, doorbell ditching. Yes. And uh, TPing where you're like throwing toilet paper. I I look back at that and I've told people who have grown up and I'm like, if you try that out here, you're done. Yeah. There's nothing good's going to come from that situation. The worst thing that happened where I was from is, you kids, you you little rascals. You little rascals. Yeah. (laughs) There was one that me and my friends did that... uh, (laughs) Was kind of dumb. We I played paintball a lot. Oh, I used I was, to paintball. Yeah, so yeah. So yeah. we used to take the barrels off, and my buddy lived right by the highway outside of town. This like, is in New Mexico. This was in New Mexico. This was when I was a teenager. And he lived basically on top of this, like, retaining wall that the highway would go right past. Mm-hmm. Like, right past it. If you look down off the retaining wall, there was cars going by. And so we had the bright idea one time of taking the barrels off of our guns, put a paintball on the end. You could, you can blow dart it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quiet. So we would set up on the retaining wall and we would wait for like a truck or a bus <laughs> to go by. And it was the middle of the night. We'd just go, just like hit it with paintballs and it would just keep driving. So we did some dumb shit like that. And, yeah. You know, stuff with BB guns and just country just yeah that's similar I, very you know similar, like yeah. there's stupid things with four wheelers and four wheel getting stuck in the mud stuff like that just yeah things that you're not gonna shit. do out here in metropolitan no. los angeles <laughs> no i wouldn't i no <laughs> i wouldn't advise no, i wouldn't fuck around with paintball guns out here i wouldn't advise it <laughs> yeah no did you <laughs> city did you guys like pl- did you play like paintball uh uh, I don't even know, like the indoor type setting fields, or did oh, you like, like do like more out in the woods? So um, there was actually the the what I started on was like a really cool like established um, like rec ball course. So you know like buses and yeah. trailers and sheds and that sort of thing. And so there was there was one that I I started at 
that was probably my favorite field that I ever played at my whole entire mm -hmm. life. And it, it shut down eventually. And then there was a speedball field that opens opened in Farmington. That was, you know, the inflatable obstacles, yeah. really fast paced yeah. stuff. So I, I've done both. Did you um, have a I real fancy paintball I, gun? I did. I did have a couple. Um, Which ones? I'm just trying to think if I remember. Um, I had a spider one. Okay, I had a spider. I had a spider evolve, and I actually bought the. I don't know if you remember what a rocking trigger was. It was kind of oh, it so ended like up the being, double trigger. It ended double, up yeah. kind of being a novelty, but yeah, it was hinged, and so yes. it click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. And it was yeah, the idea was that it would be faster, but it yeah. wasn't faster. It just it fucking broke your gun, yeah, basically because it wasn't designed yeah. to shoot that fast. So yeah. I had one of those, and then I had a, a Diablo Wrath. And that was the best gun. That was the best marker mm. I ever owned. It was like this little company that no one had heard of that like for this one year won all of these awards for this like reasonably priced like speedball gun. Mm. And it was called the Diablo Wrath. And so I I bought it and it was the best marker I'd ever had. And eventually it broke down and I just couldn't get parts for it anymore because that company yeah had gone under so i had one of those and then i had a bt7 and that was the last one i ever had and that was kind of like uh how to describe that one it kind of looked like a like a real life kind of like submachine gun mm -hmm. so it was kind of like a rec ball kind of looking marker but it had the um the board and the guts of like a uh like an ion or something quick. So it was really fast. So it kind of mixed both yeah. of those things together, which I liked. <clears throat> I used it once and then it never worked for me ever again. And I could never Jeez. figure out what happened to it. I spent like $800 on that thing and it, it worked for one game, <laughs> like one day. Yeah. Like we, so it was uh, an expensive, expensive. Oh hobby. yeah. It Maybe was. One of the most expensive ones I ever had in my hometown. Like to like what we would do on the weekends is we did, you know, this is before we all drove. It was like middle school. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, it was the best to go pick up your 200 to 400 paintballs. Yep. And then go get your CO2 tank yes. filled at the CO2 tank. And the worst is when the O-ring would break. Yep. <laughs> or, or a paintball would get jammed in the gun. Yep. Or something like that. Uh, but those were some Man. good times. It was about, yeah, about one to two year stretch. Of, gotcha. Uh, I played but, from probably 13 until... I moved out here. So I played five or six wow. years, maybe more. Never played once you got out here at any of the It was harder. Yeah. Um, I got to play twice after I moved out here. There's a field in, I can't remember. It's over in Inland Empire somewhere. It might be in, hmm, I can't remember where it's yeah. at, but I played out there. Um, and then there was another field north kind of by Santa Clarita that I went to oh, okay. one time, but I haven't played in years. Yeah. I haven't played in years. It's just, it's kind of hard to organize, you know, like it's, it, and it's expensive. Oh my God. Especially if you have like gear that makes you use like better paint. Like, I don't know if you ever had a marker that was like, you have to buy like speedball, like I didn't, but I my, but yeah. It. 80 bucks, 80 bucks for like, a wasn't an angel rounds. a gun? Wasn't an angel? Yeah, I had angel a buddy, I had one. angel. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had, I actually worked in a paintball shop. Oh, for wow. a little while. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When I was like 16. That would have been a great job though. It was fun. Ready, yeah. It was fun. The owners were just like, Hey, like we're going to be out of town for like six weeks this summer. Do you want to <laughs> run the shop? And I was like 16. I'd never had a job before even. I was like, okay. <laughs> So it was just me, just this 16-year-old. It's like the week delivery, you're hired. <laughs> yeah, they were just like, hey, like come in and we'll show you what to do. Yeah. And then you can do it. And I was like, okay. And so it it went it went pretty well. Uh for the most part, I was just sitting there almost alone for the most of the Probably day. Probably reading right? the paintball magazines and I was actually reading The Watchmen. Oh, and then uh, they had all of Seinfeld on DVD. And so I was just putting in a new disc of, <laughs> of Seinfeld like every two days or every day or however long it took. So oh my God. I had a lot of downtime. And then um, if I was kind of feeling up for it, I, I wasn't really super comfortable p fixing markers. But if there was something that mm -hmm. was simple, I could do that. Yeah, um, it was a lot of just filling. Like you said, just it was a lot of filling air tanks. Yeah. And CO2 tanks. Yeah. And then I remember one day uh, they had the old, not like the ka like register, but they had like a kind of old cash register. 
and it had a separate button for tax. It wouldn't just put tax on the sale. You had to push the tax button. And that fucking thing broke one day. And so I was having to, like, I, I suck at math, but somehow I remembered how to figure out tax for sales just on a calculator and a pen and pencil. I was having to do that for every single transaction that was coming through the store. I was wow. having to like take down the total and times it by, you know, this way. And it was ridiculous. And so besides that, it was a lot of fun, but having to do that sucked. Yeah, but, no, that would suck. But I remember there was one day, um, like the last thing I'll say about it. I, I, um, there was, it was 2007. And so Dark Knight had just come out mm. and I got tickets for the Dark Knight. It was like a Friday. Great movie. And so I'm working late on Friday and it gets down to like 7 p.m. or so. And the movie's starting like 20 minutes, like right down the street. And there's just one customer in the store. I'm just like, hey, man, usually like I would let someone stick around for a while. But like I've got like tickets, the Dark Knight. <laughs> can, can we like, you know, you want to come back tomorrow or whatever? He was just like. Well, yeah, man, no problem. I was like, sweet. <laughs> I locked that place up so fast, fucking hauled ass down the street so I could watch The Dark Knight when it came out. Oh, so, man, that's hilarious. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, though. Oh, uh, well, dude, this time flew by, man. It did. Jeez. It really did. Yeah, I like, looked at my phone it, a little while back. Yeah, oh, no, I mean, this is hilarious, man. Uh, before we uh, wrap here, mm -hmm. um, you're a writer too, right? Yes. You write. You want to talk any a bit about yeah, the project sure. you're writing right now? Um, yeah. So the project that I'm writing right now, um, hmm, what can I say without my writing partner getting mad at me? <laughs> or we can just say you're working on something. We're working Stay on. Stay <laughs> Yes, I'm working. I, I have a screenplay that I've been working on with my buddy for gotcha. um, since the pandemic started, actually, like right after... I'll, I'll tell you guys this much. Like right after the pandemic started, one of my buddies from school uh, kind of got a hold of me out of the blue. He had moved back to Tulsa like the year or two before. Um, and so he kind of got a hold of me. He's like, hey, like I'm locked down. Like you want to you want to like write something? You've been asking me to write something for a while. Do you want to now? And I was like, hell yeah. And so he came to me with this idea. Um and in a nut, I'll just kind of give you guys the nutshell of the uh, the elevator pitch. Um, a it's about a like I wouldn't say disgraced, but kind of a a a, a worn down um, kind of parties too hard uh, rock star that that has an accident, has to go home, has to go back to his his midwestern home. There, he's got a stepbrother that has Down syndrome, and so he helps his brother um, win an air guitar championship because his brother is really into air guitar. And so mm. that's that's basically the elevator pitch. Mm, that's is, cool. Is that in a nutshell? He goes back home, helps his his stepbrother win an air guitar camp championship. So that's the one we're working on right now. Um, been working on that for a couple of years, but I've done some other stuff. I wrote uh, wrote a web series. A while back that we were lucky enough to get a few episodes filmed by awesome. uh, NIFA. Wow. They were like, yeah, we, we were talking with this one guy that we knew because at a NIFA kind of would share actors and directors or whatever kind of back and forth with each other. So I knew this guy. And so we were asking him if he wanted to direct. And he was like, well, actually, he's like, my buddy right now is doing the um, the web series class for NIFA. And they need a web series to film. So you just go in there and pitch your idea. And if they choose it, they'll just film a couple episodes with like a full NIFA crew with equipment and everything. Hmm. And so they wound up doing it. It was called Talking Movies. Um, and it was basically how to describe Talking Movies. It was like that episode of um, South Park with the Lord of the Rings. I didn't see that. One. Oh, okay. That's a great one. So it's like, it's like Randy and his wife were in a porno, right? And they get it mixed up with the Lord of the Rings tape and they tell the kids <laughs> to return the Lord of the Rings tape, but they take the porno tape, right? <laughs> and so then all these teenagers find out that they have porno and they kind of become the ring wraiths that are chasing them around for the ring. And so it just kind of becomes like a, you know, a farce of 
Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. just kind of based off of the things that happen. It's that was kind of the the web series. Like we had one um where we did an episode based on Rush, the movie Rush, the Formula One. Oh yeah. Movie yeah. with uh with Chris Evans. Chris Evans? Chris Hemsworth, not Chris Evans, with Chris Hemsworth. And so the idea was that um like these roommates are competing with each other, except in, not in Formula One, they're playing Mario Kart against each other. And so it's like the stakes are super high, but they're like playing fucking Mario Kart in their living room. So I, we filmed a few of those um, and I've just kind of written some other things here or there. But the one that I'm working on with my buddy is the first like feature one that, awesome. that we've we've worked on that I've tried writing. So it's been it's been an adventure just kind of trying to write a feature is a lot different from writing like short form stuff. For yeah. Sure. And what's that like having another person to work with? I work better that way. Yeah. Honestly. And we found a accountability good, and yeah. well, and just both of our, we, it's kind of like, we almost have a, like a left brain, right brain Ying kind of yang. thing going yeah. on. Cause he can just kind of, he just kind of does dialogue off the cuff and my brain doesn't work like that. So I kind of need him for that. And then my brain works kind of more in like um like you know like uh like the action in the script like mm. what you see describe you know like we open on the finer a, details yeah we open on a stranger yeah. standing in the middle of the street it's raining blah 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 that's the way my brain works so together we're able to make a, a screenplay because one brain works one way and one brain works the other way and we just kind of put it all together on on paper really it's sort of yeah. an interesting process with him well i look forward to uh watching that one thank day you. Thank yeah, you. yeah yeah and i really appreciate you coming of on course. and uh before i always give the guests the last word before we yes. go to there where can people find you uh, on social medias or anywhere they should go where would be the best um well right now i'm just yeah i'm just kind of on instagram uh De- underscore devin camp um but soon me and my wife are working on a podcast it's going to be called hi at the movies oh nice um, pretty self-explanatory yeah, that's pretty that much dude. the whole thing <laughs> you want to say something yeah, about that <laughs> so really like we've got a few episodes recorded we just need to edit them so uh, we're, we're kind of so this is way. already going this, this is, has been this stuff has been we've, executed yeah. we've been recording for a while now and so basically we'll get high we'll watch a movie <laughs> and we're just going to talk about it while we're watching it and stop and talk that's about amazing it. That's what a great things. bonding so, yeah. experience oh yeah it's been a lot of fun so you know we've picked kind of a, a mix of uh you know, really silly stuff or like bad stuff. Bad movies are fun to watch. So you'll by. you'll record as you're watching it, yes. like for the entire time. Yeah. So we're set up kind of like this, except we're set up at our coffee table and our <laughs> our ki- um on our couch, and we'll just watch it on the TV. And um, yeah, and we'll stop it. We usually have to stop to talk about stuff like the lat the the one that we probably took the longest had to be a two parter was um, Moonfall, which was that really really bad one a few years ago where it was like the moon was an alien spaceship that was crashing into the Earth. I did not see that. Oh, it was the same. It was uh, Roland Emmerich. It was the same guy that did all like. 2012 and like oh really oh okay he's got like a like a apocalypse boner like that's That's what he does (laughs) and so we had to watch that one and i mean just the 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 plot is just ridiculous it's just it the moon is literally an alien spaceship that's designed to crash onto the earth that's 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 it like and and only halle berry and um i I know the trailer i know the trailer (laughs) yeah like that they're the only ones that can save earth apparently and so it probably took us three and a half hours to watch that movie because we had to keep stopping and talking about what we were seeing and how it made no sense and you know like i actually think that's a great idea i think it's especially being in hollywood and then i think where you guys can take that is multiple i mean because you're going to be catering toward the movie audience, yes, podcast audience, yep. snack audience, right? right. <laughs> yeah, no, we're eating the whole time. You know we're what? We're pretty practice. hungry right yeah. now. Let's hit the pause yes. button. Time for some, <laughs> yeah, Snickers, <laughs> yeah. dude. That will do. Definitely keep me posted yeah, on that. I will. That's, that I sounds will. amazing. Yep. So that one, uh, keep an eye open for that one. Other than that, um, 
I don't know. I guess I could plug uh, talking movies on YouTube. That would be my what's that? My, that was my that was my YouTube uh, uh, web series that got shot by Knife. It was called wow. Talking Movies. So that's still on YouTube. So just talking movies into YouTube. Uh, yeah, I think I would do Talking Movies colon uh, Avengers. That oh wow, that was that was so long ago that we made the first one. That was 2011 wow. that we filmed that first one. So. That was a very long time ago. That's about the only other thing I really have to to plug is my my really really old <laughs> web series for movies that uh, now people probably haven't seen too many of. I don't think many people have seen Rush. Yeah, well, so I don't I mean, know who's gonna watch that on YouTube? But hey, it's there. Man, it's up there. It's Why there. Not? Yeah, yeah, watch it. <laughs> yeah, awesome, so, man. Yeah. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you, of course. I always give the guests the last word. It can be anything you want. It can be another crazy story. Mm. <laughs> and I, I just got to say this, man. Like You have given us some ear candy tonight. Of, thank you. I, we, we've been talking about some weird shit Eric, who I work with on the podcast. <laughs> We're talking like storytellers i'm fine i mean that's what people want especially if you're yeah. not watching the visual like when you're in the car or whatever yeah like it's I, i'm excited for people to go on this journey of these stories dude the, the naked guy in the street pounding yes <laughs> hulk smashed that guy's car that's hilarious yeah so, is there anything you want to leave us on it can be anything you want Ooh. um oh man i'm having a hard time thinking philosophy anything. funny story um words of wisdom just be kind I think that just that's what the world needs more of right now. Just people just being nice to each other. Because I mean, all of my stories that I had today, I realized like none of them were particularly f friendly. It wasn't any friendly interaction that I was really telling a story about. So, but you know, all things said, my my time in LA has been overwhelmingly positive. Just some weird things here and there but if you live in any major city you're gonna see some weird crap but you know that's why i love la that's why i'm still here <laughs> so yeah. i love it love it here yeah, so awesome man well i'm real grateful yeah. to have met you thanks again yeah, for coming on thank you till next time yep thank you Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Sam Dever podcast. Be sure to follow us on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you watch the podcast, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at the Sam Dever podcast.